Mali on now. My people are here. My people are here. My people are here. Yes, please. When you come, mute yourself for the meantime. Okay. Mute yourself, mute yourself, and get ready with your questions. Mute yourself. Mute yourself and get ready with your questions. Just mute yourself. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I think uh, the number is quite encouraging, so we, we can start. We can start, and then we see the headway. All right. My name is Kofi. Uh, as usual, we are here uh, to discuss a few things about Forex. So please, uh, if you have any question, uh, you can raise your hand. I can see I'm watching. If I see your hand raised, I'll quickly allow you in. And then you can ask your question. Yes. If I see your hand raised, I will ask you in. Or better still, if you have any question, just unmute yourself and ask your question, your name, and where you are reaching us or where you have joined us from. And then you go ahead with your question. So let's hear you. Anyone who is ready with the question can unmute himself or herself. Yeah, someone has done that. Please, what's your name? Who is here? Hello? Sunday, are you here? Nick, are you here? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, your name, please. Yeah, one minute. Okay, we have just an hour to finish this, so please let's let's hurry. Let's hurry and then come up with the questions, please. Let's hurry. Anyone with the any question, please go ahead. Let's hear you. If you have a question, let's hear you. Those who have just joined, please mute yourself. Mute yourselves. I don't want to mute all of you to look some way. If you have a question, I have about 18 people here. Any question? Yeah, I just want to thank you. I'm joining for the first time. OK. OK, your, your name. Come come up with your name, please. Help us. Igwe Kletus. Igwe Kletus. OK, I'm sure from Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria, exactly. All right, good. So let's hear you. I just want to thank you. I've been following your your playlist. Also. Okay. You are wonderful. So I don't have questions today. Okay. I just nice. Want to start, start. Yes. Yes. You are doing wonderful. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm grateful that you are following. Yes. Who is next? Who is next? Hello. Yes. Please help us with your name. Ayola Isaac. Okay, Isaac. From Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay, let's yeah. get it. Yes. Uh, I have been uh, following your work on the internet. Okay. Charlie, I got to, I, I got to know you from uh, that uh, your introduction to forest for forest to the beginner. Okay. And. Uh, all along, I'll be having interest to contact you. Okay. Now, I'll let the, to, uh, for this week, mm -hmm. I would like to receive the uh, signal from you. Okay. And I also want you to be my mentor. Okay. I think uh, that would be nice. We can, we can discuss that if you send me a message on Telegram or my WhatsApp number. I think you have my WhatsApp okay. number. If you don't, I can mention that for you. Then you can chat me for us to take this uh, up. Will that be okay Thank with you? Thank you for your good work. All right. That is okay. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Anyone here? Again, questions, contributions, please just unmute yourself and then mention your name and where you, you, you have joined us from. And let's hear you. Hello? Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Who is this? Uh, a few people have their microphones on. Please, when you join off your microphone, please. Okay. 
Hello? All right. You 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 are on floor. Okay, please your name. I'm called Bernard. I'm here in Uganda. Uh, Bernard. Yes. Sir. Oh, okay. Uh, increase your voice a bit. It looks like we, your voice is very low. How about this? Are you getting me? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Bernard, I think your your voice is very low. Please. Oh, let me first take. Let me first take. I will call back. Uh, okay, good. That that's nice. Who who else want to speak? Just unmute yourself. Mention your name, where you are reaching us, and then let's hear you. Um. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, is it Julius? Uh, yeah. This is Julius. Okay, Julius. Let's hear you. Okay. Um. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say a big thank you for what you do. I have been following you too, and I'm learning a lot from you. Okay. God bless you for the great work you're doing. Thank you. I, the, quest, yeah, the question I want to ask is uh, regarding the chart. Okay. When you the open chart. the MT4 charts. Okay. Yeah, the time, the time on, on the chart okay. sometimes does not correspond with the time, uh, your local time. Okay. Is there a way you can uh, update, you can uh, regulate that from the settings? Is there any, any way you okay. can have that so you can fit into your time? That's okay. my question. Okay, it's a good question. I, I do have uh, a lot of you asking this question. And the truth of the matter is that it's not as if the time is uh, outdated or not matching with your current time. When you switch to the lower time frames, the, the chat will, will zoom out for you to see the time. So when it happens that way, please take the chart to one minute to see if the time on one minute correspond with your time or take it to the five minute time frame or the 15 minute time frame to check. If it corresponds with your time, then that should tell you that the time is accurate. It's just that when you move to the four hour or the daily, it accumulates. So you are not able to see it accurately, but that doesn't mean that the time is far away from your time. So when it happens that way, switch to the smaller time frames and check. Is, is, is the question answered? I don't know if you're okay with the explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. I'll try that soon. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, who else want to talk? Just unmute yourself and let's hear you. Yeah, um, sorry. My name is Amina Abdullah Abakar. Okay, Abakar, I'm calling, let's hear you. Uh, I'm calling from Sokoto State in Nigeria. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We're happy to have you. Okay, let's continue. Abubakar, is that all? Okay, maybe that's what Abubakar want to say. Who else want to talk? Just unmute yourself and let's hear you. Who is hello? here? Yes, hello. Yes, uh, my name is Sunday Same from Nigeria, Ibadan, Nigeria. Okay, Sunday, let's hear you. Yes, sir. Uh, I, and my own question is, how can, can someone uh, build a self-discipline in trading? Okay. The first question. Then the second question, how to uh, to properly trade stop loss? Each time I try to trade my own stop loss, when the back, uh, market tries to retrace, it hit my stop loss. I don't, so that's the two questions. Okay. The first question is, how can you discipline yourself? Before you can be disciplined, you need to have a trading plan you will need to have a trading plan. That is the last thing you need. Uh, if you have watched my last video that I posted on the channel with regards to the things you will need Hello? before you start a live Forex trading, Hello? Uh, please, Hello, uh, if you are hearing me, just mute yourself and Tell let me finish the person's question first. Hello? Tell if you me. join, if you join, please mute yourself. When you join, mute yourself. So if you have watched the video that I did with regards to the things that you need in order to start a live forex trading, I made mention of four things. If you go back to that video and you watch it to the end, the last thing I talked about is, is a, a forex trading plan. You need to have a trading plan. The trading plan will tell you how many uh, pips or how much you are looking for in the market in a day or in a week. 
and then you will follow that plan to execute that plan you need to have a goal the vision is the bigger picture the goal is the daily calculated steps to reach that vision so if you do not have your daily calculated uh goals which will yeah. help you reach your vision it will be yeah. difficult for you to just jump from one goal straight to your vision so you need to have a trading plan. If your trading plan is to have $100 profit in the market, no matter how much your account is, once you exceed or you reach that target, you are done for the week. Your target is met. And that is why I have done same in my VIP group. Those of us in the VIP group, you realize that there is a target of between 100 to 500 pips every week. That is our weekly target. Once we get into the target and we achieve it, we are done. Because you need to have a trading plan. The trading plan will help you to be disciplined. You will not be chasing the market here and there just because mm -hmm. the market mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. So a trading yes, plan is what will help you to become that disciplined. If you don't have a trading yes, plan, you will just be chasing, uh, chasing the charts up and down and you end up losing more and more or the profit you have made before you realize you have lost all that profit. So you need mm -hmm. a trading plan. The trading plan mm -hmm. will help you to be able to achieve your discipline that you are looking for. The trading plan will help you achieve that discipline. So you need a trading plan. It's very, very important. How much are you looking to get in a week? How much? If it is in money, how much? If it is pips, how many pips are you looking for for the whole of the week? So if it is that's one signal that will give you your weekly target, you are good to go. If it is two signals that will give you your weekly target, you are good to go. Once you achieve your target, you are done. You don't need to stress yourself and continue chasing the market. The market is there for everybody, but we are all not supposed to stay in the market every minute, every second. No, you are not supposed to be chasing the chart every minute because it is moving. No. Once you hit your target, you are good to go. It's just like you having a shop in a marketplace. Once the, the time for you to close is up, you close. It doesn't matter how much people may be coming later with. You have closed. You have ended the day. You close your shop. The same thing with Forex. Once you hit your target, you are done. You have to close and let the market be. Allow the others to also enjoy. And then you stay in your lane. So that is about discipline. You need a trading plan that will help you to reach your destination in terms of your goals. Now, mind you, a trading plan is different from a trading strategy. A trading strategy is actually what will help you to pick the trades. You need a strategy to help you pick the trades. So for instance, your strategy will tell you to buy Euro USD or sell Euro USD. And then your trading plan will tell you how many pips you should be targeting. Because you have a plan, you have a target that you are looking for. So the trading plan will help you to know how many pips you are looking for. And once it takes you an hour to get or two hours to get that, you are okay. You leave the rest of the hours and you are good to go. You, you, you leave the market. Don't say you have hit your target within the first hour. So you continue to stay in the market for more. That is where you end up losing everything that you have made. So please, you need to stick to your trading plan. The plan comes with the strategy. The strategy will help you take your, your trade. The plan will help you know how much you are looking for in the market. If your weekly target is 100 pips and you got that 100 pips in a single day, you are done for the week. You are done. You are done for the week. It's, forest trading is a plan. It is not just chasing the charts, chasing the market here and there. That is not the way to go. If you don't have the plan, you, you continue chasing and chasing. And before you realize you made enough, you lost it back. You, you made enough profit before you realize you've lost everything again. Your trading plan will make you become disciplined. So please take note of that. Now, the second question, how you can trail stop with your stop loss? Uh, it, I, I, I really do not know what strategy you are using. So it will be difficult for me to answer that question. The strategy you are using will define how you should trail or how you should move your stop loss along with the trade. But if I don't know the strategy you are using, it will be difficult for me to just say that do this. 
or do that. I may be misleading the others because all of us have different, different strategies that we use in trading the forest market. So maybe you may have to contact me one-on-one -on -one and then explain to me the strategy you are using. Maybe with that, I can be able to give you a better uh, answer. I think that will be the second answer that I, I want to give or the, the answer to the second question. All right. Now, who else is ready to ask a question? Go ahead. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Tell us your name and where you are reaching us from. Then you can go ahead with the question. We'll be ready to listen to you. If you're also ready with your question, please just unmute Hello. yourself and ask. How are you, Mr. Kofi? Yeah, Fred. Yes. How are Let's you, hear you. Yes, I'm very fine here. Right. Let's hear you. Uh, first of all, I want to um, thank you for the good work you're doing to the, to the society. Thank you. And uh, the time that you take tirelessly. Mm. Uh, um, it's uh, many things that uh, we can gratify you for, but uh, for now, it's straight to business because I see you are a man of uh, focus. Thank you. So I want to thank you also for clarity in the recent video on um the hundred lot size. Oh, okay. no, no, sorry, hundred uh, stop uh, stop loss. Stop loss. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I was really waiting for you so that I ask you how do we trade as we put it to our um, uh, amounts with the hundred uh, stop loss. Uh, you know, it can just be the short movement and the money is gone. Yeah, but. Um, the concept on calculation was so clear. And Thank you. I'm so grateful about that. Yes. Thank you. I'm also so grateful now, for that. Okay. What right. I want to know is um mm -hmm. on time frame right. issue. The time uh, frame. On which yeah. uh, time frame do you check the, the candlestick, yeah, candlestick patterns? You see, there's a when the candlesticks can give you um a leeway or signal. That okay. you can now enter either for a buy or for a sell. Okay. But now you find that you won't know uh, on which time frame can you uh, pick the right candles that can uh, give you guidance to either buy or sell. Okay. Because maybe you go to a small time frame, it will show that there are candlesticks that are showing that you must uh, go for a buy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bigger time frame, it's showing it's that maybe the, what, one candlestick is just retracing. And it okay. will still continue maybe going down or going up. Okay. But I get you. a smaller time frame, yes. I get so your question. Yes. yes. The second now, question. Okay, go ahead. Yes, because yeah, the second question is um uh in, in terms of the events uh, like news and all, can, can it distort uh can the news distort the uh, the trend of the market? The the trend, in fact, when you have done analysis, you, you see that. Okay, my analysis is gonna uh, mm -hmm. be a sell. A sell. And oh, yeah, everything the the the, the candlestick. So, so you want to find out whether the, the news can distort that sell that you have seen. Yes. yes exactly. Yes. I yeah, understand you. Everything, everything that you planned. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Let me answer that question first. Now, the news is a data that is yet to be released, and we all do not know the outcome. So the outcome can either be positive or negative. And whatever happens to the outcome, it will definitely have an impact on the currencies involved. So if the news is coming on USD, I don't know how many of you have checked this week, the news, that's, uh, news that is coming. There are a lot of major news that is coming, especially interest rate decisions. We have Japanese yen interest rate decision coming this week. We have the US dollar interest rate decision coming this week. We have the Canadian dollar interest rate coming this week. A lot of major, major news are coming this week. And the market is going to react to the outcome of this news. So you, when you see, for instance, Euro USD is going to be buy, and then there's a news coming on USD, you are thinking or asking yourself whether that news can have effect on the direction that you want to go. Yes, depending on the outcome of the news. If the outcome of the news is positive, it will affect the currency positively. If the outcome of the news is negative, it will affect the currency negatively. So yes, the outcome of the news will determine what will happen to the currency you are trading. So often I advise that if a major news is coming on any currency and you, you don't want to be caught up 
at the wrong side, it is good that you wait for the news to come. Unless you are a trader that trade the news or the fundamental trader, if you're a fundamental trader, then you might have developed a strategy on how to pick your trades with the news. If not, if you are not a fundamental trader, which is a news trader, then you will have to wait for the news to come. Or better still, you can gamble and say, okay, I foresee that this news will definitely take this uh, trade to my side or to my forecast or my direction. Then maybe you can leave the trade to run. But if it doesn't go the way you have predicted, then you are going to suffer for it. So it's always good that because you do not know the outcome of the news, it's better to wait for the news to come. But if you are a fundamental trader, which is a news trader, then maybe you have your strategy already. So yes, the news will have an impact on the market and it can change your direction based on the outcome of the news. So you need to be careful with that. Anyway, to your second question, if only I haven't forgotten. Uh, your second question, um, can you remind me on that again? I, I want to be sure. Okay, right. it's an issue of, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. An issue of uh, candlesticks. And, uh, good, 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 good. Yes. Thank you. Quickly, let me continue. So the candlesticks, you are asking which of them will be appropriate to use in terms of analysis. Because sometimes you want to do it on the smaller time frame. Meanwhile, on the major time frame or the bigger time frame, it is just a pullback and not the actual trend. I would suggest that you do the top-down approach. And with a top-down analysis, you will always start from the bigger time frame. If the bigger time frame, the trend of the market is a buy, for instance, example, for the purpose of example, if on the one month time frame, it's the trend is a buy, then you come to the weekly. If the weekly is also a buy, you are getting a trend of buy on the weekly. Then you come to the daily. If the daily is also giving you a buy, then it is possible that when you see a buy on the four hour, you should go for it. Because the four hour time frame corresponds with the monthly, the weekly, and the daily. Or if you want to begin from daily, you can begin from daily. You check the daily. If the trend is a buy on daily, you come to the four hour. If it's also a buy on the four hour, and then you come to the one R. If the one R is also giving you a buy direction, then once you spot a buy on the 30 minute or on the 15 minutes, then you know that it corresponds with all the other time frames that you saw. So it becomes a sure direction for you to go for. So you do the top down approach using the bigger time frame. You zoom in from the bigger time frame to the smaller time frames. So you would have to decide which of the time frames you're going to begin from. If it's on the four hour, what is the direction of the trend on the four hour? Then you zoom into the one hour. Is the one hour also giving you the same direction? If it's giving you a different direction, then it becomes a trade not to even go for. You need to make sure that from the four hour, the one hour, and then to the 30 minutes, and then the 15 minutes corresponds with each other. They must be in line. Then if you want to use the 15 minutes to take your trade, then on the 15 minutes, once you see a buy, because on the four hour, it is a buy trend. On the one hour, it is a buy trend. On the 30 minutes, it's a buy trend. And you are comfortable taking your trades on the 15 minutes. So if the 15 minutes gives you a buy, then it is a sure direction for you to go for then you can then take that decision to go for a buy. So that is the top-down approach, which you must always do. So you would have to decide where you want to start from, whether you want to start from the monthly or you want to start from the weekly or you want to start from the daily or the four hour. These are the bigger time frames. So you must start from any of them, either monthly, weekly, daily, or four hour. You choose one of them, then you come down in the same direction. I'm sure I have answered this also. Fred, are you okay? Yes, sir, I'm okay. You have really answered well. Thank you. Uh, Thank I think we have just less than 10 minutes to end. Uh, any more questions? I want one or two more questions and then we go. Yeah, hello, how are you doing, my friend? I'm very good, I'm very good. Yeah, and thank you for what you're doing. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to 
my question is, uh, is it advisable to trade on Mondays? Okay. Uh, this is also a very interesting question. I, I hear a lot of people saying different things uh, about this. The honest truth is this. If you want to go the bank's way, then maybe I will ask you that you don't trade there uh, on Monday. But if you are the type that don't want to just go the bank's way, the reason I'm saying if you want to go the bank's way is because it is the banks or the institutions who actually determine the price or the, the trend of the market. And all the institutional traders, they begin the market on Mondays, which is the first day of the week. So it is assumed that on the very first day of the week, the institutional traders are not yet settled in the market. They are not yet settled. And if I use the word settled, I'm sure you all understand. They are not yet certain on the direction they want to go. It takes the full day, which is the very first day, which is Monday, for them to settle. And then by Tuesday, it becomes easier for you to spot the direction they want to go. Then you can join them in their direction. Because mind you, you are not supposed to trade against these institutional traders. You're supposed to rather follow them to make profit. So you want to know where they want to go. But Monday being the first day of the week, they are now coming into the market. So they are now about to settle and to give you the direction they want to go. And once you catch the direction they want to go, then it is now appropriate for you to join them. That is my way of uh, advising if you want to go the institutional way. But if you are the type that do not care about the institutional way of going, you want to focus the trend and move along, then you, you, you can trade on Mondays or any other day. It also includes holidays because on holidays especially holidays that will fall on um not fall holidays that involve united states and then maybe the uk especially if the holiday involves the united states because these two markets are the bigger ones the united states market which is the new york session and then the london session they are the two bigger markets in terms of forex so if there's a holiday in US, then you know that these banks will not be working. If it's a holiday in the UK, then you know that these banks will not be working. And that is when you often don't see volatility or volume in the market because the banks in the US or in UK are closed for the day. So if you are an institutional trader, you want to follow the banks, you want to follow the institutions, then maybe Monday will be your off day and also a holiday involving the US or UK will also be your off day. I don't know if my, your question is answered. Oh uh, yeah, it is. And uh, what can you uh, say about gold? Gold? Yes. Okay, gold is a commodity and trading commodities is quite different from trading currencies because commodities, uh, is based on demand and supply or supply and demand. If Ghana need rice to import, we will then order for rice. If Ghana doesn't need rice, we won't order. So the, the price of commodities depends on demand and supply. When there is higher demand, the commodity will appreciate in value. But when there's lower demand, the commodity will depreciate in value. These are the basic economic terms that we've all been told in the classroom. So commodity-wise, which, uh, which involves gold, you would have to apply supply and demand, especially if you want to trade gold well. And that is why when it comes to those who want to trade uh, support and resistance, support and resistance simply means uh, uh, demand and supply. They often do well with commodities, which is gold, including other commodities like uh, lithium, silver, and the rest. You may do well with these commodities when you are trading supply and demand or support and resistance. But when it comes to currencies, for currencies, the demand is there. Every day, people are ordering for currencies. People are exchanging currencies here and there. So the demand is there. You don't need 
any demand from anywhere. The demand is always constant. It is believed that in every day, an amount of 5.3 trillion changes hands in a single day. So that should tell you that the demand is already there in terms of currencies. So if you want to be trading, waiting for one country to demand for a certain currency, then you will jump in, in that direction, you will be wrong. Because always there is demand in terms of currencies and there's always supply in terms of currencies because every day, 5.3 trillion changes hands every day. And the demand is there, the supply is also there. So often those who want to trade support and resistance and then supply and demand with currencies, they often don't get it right. They often lose a lot because they think that once it comes to a demand level or it comes to a supply level, it is time to take action. It's wrong because there's always demand. There's always supply when it comes to currencies. But commodities, yes, supply and demand will be a good thing to look at. So yes, you may look at what strategy to use in approaching commodities, which involves gold. It's good, but don't use the same approach for currencies for gold, you will get it wrong. That is what I will say when it comes to gold. Yeah, anyway, thank you. I got it wrong. I lose a lot of money. I think I talk uh, with you during the week and uh, I really appreciate your help. And the uh, VIP stuff is yeah. very, very helpful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank God you, thank you. God bless you too. Now, my people, I have less than a minute to end this. Uh, I will suggest that my contact is there. You can check, chat me on WhatsApp or on Telegram. Maybe if you don't have my contact, let me give it to you. My WhatsApp contact is plus two, three, three. You can write plus two, three, three. That is the country code, Ghana, plus two, three, three. And then the number is two, four, six, one, three, six, six. Zero nine. So the plus two three three is there, and then two four six one three six six zero nine. So that is my contact. You can reach me on WhatsApp. We can talk. We can discuss whatever is bothering you. Let's do that. Or on Telegram. You already know how to get in touch with me on Telegram. It's Kofi Dollar on Telegram. Thank you guys. I really appreciate your time here. Hopefully next week we will come back and do more. Until then, take very good care of yourself. I'll see you again at the end of this week.